Hello my lovelies, it's Nisha. So today I have a great but very strange hack for hooded eyes. Again, another hack for hooded eyes. I saw this way, way back. It went quite viral on like social media and I thought it's just a gimmick. And I remembered about it the other day and I thought, let's try it. And it works a treat. So this hack trick is for finding your crease. You know with hooded eyes you always ask how do I find, find my crease and I've done a couple of different videos on how to find it. You know one was to guide yourself with this crease here that comes from your nose but then some people said I don't have that crease although I think majority of people will have that little shadow crease going from your uh, from your nose. I have a whole playlist on tips and tricks for hooded eyes. I will link it here. But this is using a teaspoon. I know <laughs> it, it seems so gimmicky and silly, but it really works. Also, I think this trick will be very helpful for those of you who have uneven hooded eyes, meaning that the skin on one eye is hanging a bit lower than on the other. The main thing is that your bone here, your ocular bone, is it will be always in the same place. Um, it's just the skin that might be more hanging on one side than the other. And also, depending on the size of the spoon, this will help with droopy eyes like mine. So as you can see with my eyes, um, I have, this is my hood. Sorry, I need to look here in the mirror. This is my hood. So my lid, mobile lid, is the lid that moves, is hidden by that hood. When I lift my eyes like this, you can see my whole lid. I'm quite lucky that I can lift my eyebrows so high that I can still st stretch that skin, but some of you can't do that. It's just, um, it's just there. It doesn't matter if you lift your eyes or not. I also have droopy eyes, so they are sort of drooping on the side. And what can happen then when you're doing your crease, if you follow the shape of your eye, you can make it even more droopy by bringing the eyeshadow down here. You have to go much higher. So this trick can be helpful for droopy eyes and that will depend on what size spoon you use. Okay, let's do it. So I have here two sizes of teaspoon. This is like a regular teaspoon. This is a tiny one, you know, one of those that you get with a little china cup for when you're having a ladies afternoon tea. So if you've got very small eyes, you don't have as much room as I do between my eyelashes and eyebrows, use the smaller one. I can use both. And now, if you have droopy eyes, the bigger one is a bit better. I will explain to you when I'm doing it. I am going to use today the Natasha Denona Camo Palette. And in my crease, I will go with this middle shade. And this is Wayne Goss Brush 19. So let me show you first with the little spoon. You will put it right in the corner of your nose. Do it straight, so it's parallel. Not like this, not like this, straight. Try to find the ocular bone and sort of put it on that bone. Take your eyeshadow and just make a little template. And that gives you perfect placement of your eyeshadow for your crease. Look at that. Now, the small spoon, if you've got droopy eyes, if you follow it down here, it will give you the droopiness. That's why I said that the bigger spoon might be better for droopy eyes because if you go all the way down here, it will bring the eyeshadow to the place that should be. But if you have very small eyes and like I said, not much room between your eyebrow and your 
um, eyelash then definitely smaller spoon now let's do it on this side it's always more difficult because I have to hold it with my left hand so again hold it straight stick that pointy bit of the spoon into that nook in your nose find your bone and there it is and look how even they are I think my eyes um, I can myself see it you know I see myself every day I do my makeup every day but sometimes some of you say that one of my eyes is more droopy than the other I can't remember which one because I can't see it but look how evenly and also this placement is so good because sometimes if I do it freehand even I sometimes go too low and then I have to correct that because I have that tendency to follow the shape of my eye and make my eye more droopy. You can always use the handle of your spoon then to connect the two although it's very difficult on this side but there you go and this once you have that done deepen it up and then blend it upwards because you still need to go higher this is just your starting point of your crease with hooded eyes you know you if you do it freehand and you are not used to doing it you can go far too low with your crease and when you open your eyes you can't see it whereas now look even if I drop my eyes down without going like this you can still see the crease so I was so amazed because probably if you've ever seen this trick trick probably a lot of you thought what a silly thing to do but it really works and when it comes to the placement of the teaspoon like I told you I am NOT lifting my eyes when I put the teaspoon on I'm quite relaxed not completely but quite relaxed and I'm trying to find usually when you put it in the middle in the corner of your nose when you press it here you will feel that bone and because you also have that curved shape it's just perfect perfect for a crease so don't go below that crease just in the same place it is and then slightly blend it upwards I can just see you all running to your kitchens getting a teaspoon <laughs> and then connect your eyeshadow here in that seven shape even I find it so helpful and you know I've dealt with my hooded eyes all my life and I've been doing makeup on myself so many times but when I do it freehand I sometimes still will go lower on one eye than the other and then while my eyeshadow is on I will fix it I look where is lower where is higher but with this it seems to be doing it with the spoon it seems to come out evenly so I think even I am going to be using this spoon every day I'm going to go in to this a bit darker brown and just deepen it you deepen the crease where you've put the first line not higher And you want some sort of brush that is small and pointy for this because if you went with a huge brush like this over the spoon then your eyeshadow will go too high I know you are blending it out too high but you don't want to put a lot of pigment that high up 
I hope you, you're getting it. So you want the most pigment just in that crease and then you're blending it out. So like I said, this is a Wayne Goss number 19. Very good, that one. You can use Rifa 13, even the Morphe M507. Can you see? So they are tapered at the top and quite small. Uh, Louise Young L 38b look how pointy that one is so anything small like that i will list, list these brushes down below you could also use sigma e30 this pencil brush just to carve out that crease and then you can blend it with something else the only thing is with um, pencil brushes are quite stiff they might give you too much pigmentation and you will have a really really um, dark line that might be a bit more harder to blend out so these are pretty good because they are all soft and fluffy but I am still on Wayne Goss 19 and I'm just deepening this crease Then I'm going to take my Hulu P66 and I will go into the darkest eyeshadow and just apply it on the outer corner and now I can see how high I can go with it into my crease. Now on Rifa O2, I am going to go to this uh, shimmering brown and I'm going to apply that on my mobile lid. You can obviously do it with any palette, with any color. So practice that because I think this is going to be a game changer. And then right in my corner, I'm going to use this light eyeshadow on Rifa 28. And then on my lower lash line, I am going to go with the dark one and buff it out with the middle one. Rifa 03 and I'm going to this dark one, connecting it with the top lash line. Then I'm taking a Rifa 12 and I'm going into the middle one to just buff this out just underneath. And then I will go back to this shimmery light one, which I think is June. And just apply it in my inner corner. Rifa 15, I'm just going to blend out all the edges. And that is so perfectly even. Honestly, I sometimes can't do it freehand like that. I have to go back and forth and trying to match both of my eyes. I think I have a problem with seeing straight lines anyway. <laughs> I remember my friend who is a hairdresser. I remember in her salon playing with a mannequin head, trying to cut, because that's the first thing apparently you do when you hairdresser trying to cut straight line your hair in straight lines so I tried that and I couldn't I thought you were straight and she said to me you would never make a hairdress I said some people just cannot see it okay I am going to put some black coal liner just on the half of my eye wing it a bit I go tiny bit on the outer corner here and the mascara 
which I didn't bring here. <laughs> I'll be back after I've done the mascara. Right, and that's the finished look. I honestly am so amazed at this trick. I think I am going to use the teaspoon every day now. It just makes everything so much easier and even I just love it. I can just see you running frantically around the house trying to find teaspoons. Just try different sizes and see which one fits your eye the best. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and stay fabulous. Bye.